Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and it's Monday, March 30th, and tomorrow is the last day of March. It kind of snuck up on me. <laughs> last week, I was planning, I think I had, I think I thought there was more March in this week than there really was, and so I was thinking, oh, I'll do my son's dragon piece, I'll do another rotation on Anne. This week, <clears throat> and there's only two days left in March, so you know what I'll be doing the next two days. <laughs> it's a day on the dragon and a day on Anne. Um, yeah, so last week I didn't realize also that the 25th was quickly approaching, and that's the day I needed to turn in part five of Bloomtopia, and so I took time away from other stitching to focus on that, cut it really close, turned it in, finished it and turned it in on the 25th. So that part releases on Wednesday on the 1st. So I will share, I'll film a little clip of that in after this, and then I'll post that with my next video after it releases. So it was really fun and it, it, it still went pretty quickly, but because I don't have any travel stitching right now, it's hard to find time for those projects. I didn't do anything more on my, well, I might have. I might have done some more on my owl since you saw it. I think I did a little bit at the beginning of the week. So this is what that looked like last time. And here it is now. I believe I finished outlining the owl, all of his wing, and I'm starting in to outline the apple. So I was kind of hoping to get this done, but I didn't really make time for it. So I don't have a good set time to spend on these pieces other than just whenever we happen to watch a show or do something like that. And it, those are kind of few and far between. So I don't know. Um, everything's a little bit strange right now. <laughs> so I... Hopefully, I didn't even work on my temperature tree um, this week because I was trying to finish my challenge pieces because I was shooting for the larger goals towards the beginning of the week and then ran out of week. So I hopefully this week will get caught up on my temperature tree and work on that owl, maybe finish that owl in, in addition to the other things I want to do. So there's no, last I checked, there was no challenges in the Enchanted Stitching Challenges group for this week that have been posted. So they may be posted late or they may be not posted at all. Usually there's like pop-up challenges that happen at the change of the month that are only for a couple days. And I haven't seen anything like that show up yet. So, so far I'm just gonna work on what I, what I need, need quote unquote need to work on um, <clears throat> and call it good. And if they, if they post prompts later on in the week, then I can, see if they fit. So we'll have to wait and see. I'll show you what I worked on last week and I'll show you what I'm planning to work on this week at this point and hopefully this will be a quick video because I don't have a lot of time. So hopefully I'm not rushing too much. Um, let's see. First off, oh yeah, and I did go and find on Hirschner's they have PDFs of these fairies. This is the trick-or-treat fairy and it was like four dollars I think for a PDF. And this is the Sunflower Fairy, which was $5, I think. So, yes, please. <laughs> Sign me up. So, I got those this week. The first thing I worked on this week was the Mayflower Rose Ornament. And I was shooting for a 500 stitch goal, which ended up taking me all the way until Wednesday or Thursday. Because in between there, I broke it up with... Bloomtopia stitching, but I did get over 500 stitches on this. I'm really happy where it's at now. Um, this is what it looked like last time. And here it is now. So I got the all the one over one stitching finished and started in on the, the sky in the uh, two over two sections. And so all, this is the bottom. The, there'll be um, two over two water down here. And then this is all sky and then it'll all, it'll come around here as well. And these are holes for like leaves and things, leaves and flowers. This is 28 count home tea dyed Monaco by, um, I 
I don't remember Julie maybe I, the, somebody sent me some kits and fabric and things and she had she had dyed this and it made the holes really um the threads really plumped up to make it a little bit harder to, to stitch on and I do notice that it it th shreds my um shreds my thread <laughs> faster than usual talk about tongue twister because of the holes being so small and so when I switched from working on this 28 count to the 28 count Lugana that I have my Bloomtopia on that one's a dream because the holes are really big and the threads just glide right through it so it's it's definitely a different experience um but I'm happy with that I got I got over 500 stitches on that and since I do want to finish it this year, that was nice to get a nice chunk done. And then I worked on my E Fairy, which is for my niece. And I went ahead and shot for the moon on this one and got over 500 on this one also because it's a gift that I do want to also finish before the end of the year. So I want to make sure that it gets done in a timely manner. So this is what that one looked like last time. And here she is now. Quite a bit done. <laughs> it's fun how, how much stitching that can be. This is on 32 count Water Lily Linen by Wichelt. And I came up and I did this cross stitching along the edge, which is one, it's hard to see the variegation there, maybe a little bit there. It's called Serpentine by Color and Cotton. And it's light green with a little bit of blue. And it it's just enough different from the fabric that it creates some texture. And then I um, backstitched one, I think one length of Old Salem Spell did all of that. And that's, backstitches count for half a stitch in the challenge group. And then I came in here and started filling in the E, um, some of the e colors in the E. So pretty fun. So that's great to get that much done on that in the month. So I do like that plan to kind of beef up the goals for especially some of the ones that I have deadlines for and then I worked on my oldest whip and at this point I was really cutting it close I think I got this out on Saturday <laughs> I knew I had this one and grapes that I wanted to finish so I I stuck to the 250 goal on this one because I really even though it's my oldest whip I don't have any plans to finish it this year so um I just did the the minimum on this one, the minimum large goal, I guess I should say. So this is what that looked like before. And here it is now. And I stitched up here on, I did one length of black in, in this checkerboard, and then I did the bow with its back stitching, and then came over and started back stitching there's a little bit right here that hadn't been done. And then I backstitched along here a little bit until I got to <clears throat> met the 250 goal and finished my string. So <clears throat> there will be some like long stitches in gold metallic right here, but I'll wait until later to do that. So there's that. And that was 250 stitches. So that's fun to get that little bow finished. And this is on 14 count. Looks like antique white Ada that came with the kit started who knows how long ago probably more than 20 but it's still fun to pull it out and it's got lots of colors that the challenge groups uh the challenge challenges sometimes need specific colors and that's a nice one to get the specific colors and then my last one i did this past week was grapes and i worked on this on sunday didn't have a lot of time on sunday to stitch during the day or the evening and so this is this is what this one looks like this is a golden kite um grapes and so by the time I got to it I only got a little over 200 stitches finished before I had to post my progress in enchanted stitching challenges and then I had more time later in the night that I had to go back to work on it some more and so I have total got um a little over 350 which is great it's not quite the 500 i was hoping for but it's more than the 250. i only got credit for 200 stitches which met the middle prompt of 100 stitches 
So I only got two points for it instead of five, but it's okay. <laughs> I know I got 350 stitches on it. So this is um, decent progress for me and I'm happy with what I was able to get done in the time I had because of the circumstances I had. So there it is. This is what it looked like before. And here it is now. And this is on 18 count Fiddler's Ada. It's kind of oatmeal-y texture. I just, I originally told you I was gonna work over here and then when I pulled it out, I remembered that there was some, just a couple little dangly part threads over here that were kind of annoying and in the way. It didn't really seem to have a home. So I went ahead and worked those in and then came over here and worked on this block a little bit that I still had yet to finish in this column, which there's a lot of onesies and twosies right here, but a lot of those colors were over here also. So I worked in several of these colors. Um, and then I noticed that some of these colors in the grape actually had quite a few stitches in here and some down here. So I went ahead and worked in this column as well. And so this part of the grape is starting to fill in a little bit. Um, and I got some in that column. It's very tight right there. So I'm hoping once I get the stitches in, it'll smooth out a little bit. It's a little rippled, um, but it's high, high confetti area. So I'm happy with that. I will keep plugging away at this whenever I get it out. I'm not sure when it will come out again. Um, I may, yeah, I don't remember if, if I have it down for another monthly monthly thing for full coverage fanatics i i had it down for march let's see if any of the other of these let me look real quick i have my little my little stitchy calendar here i thought some of these were in here twice but i don't know that all of them were so yes i have it again in november for the uk and I have written down the Moors. So something about the Moors reminded me of this. Maybe this um, outside scene reminded me of the Moors. <laughs> so anyways, I have this down in November, so it may not come out again until then, or it may come out for a prompt at some point, but I do want to get these finished before the end of the year, because I think that'll be a nice stopping point. So It'll probably need to come out more than just November to get that done. So we'll, I'll keep it on my radar if it ever meets a prompt. I tend to get, I can, with, with the prompts, I tend to get fixated on certain projects. I think there's a little bit more monogamous stitching in me than I sometimes think there is. Because <laughs> I, like with the Mayflower ornament or different things, I'll, I'll work on it two or three times in the month. Like once I've gotten it out i'm not satisfied with where it is and i want to um, another prompt will remind me of that one oh i could work on that one again so it is kind of interesting how i tend to keep coming back to the same projects within the month or within a few weeks and then all my family stitching that i'm working on once a month i i end up not getting that many of my whips covered every month even though i have almost 50 I, I don't remember exactly. It's changing. Um, so I feel like I'm working on the same things all the time, but it's fine. The other ones, with, with full coverage fanatics, I'll be changing at least my focus pieces for for that every month. So that will help me kind of change things up a little bit. And I'll be, I don't know, as, as the challenges push me in different directions, hopefully I'll keep switching it up a little bit, but I guess it doesn't really matter because it would be nice to eventually touch all of my pieces throughout the year. So we'll see if I can get to that. So this week, because there's two days left in March, I would still like to work on Dragon Ride by Teresa Wensler because it's a, a family piece that I have not yet touched in March. So this is where this is. And I have yet, I have not yet decided if I want to work on this today or Anne. So there's, there's where that one is now. This is on 28 count. Light blue, even weave by MCG Textiles. Mostly two over two. The man is one over one. So 
I am working on this light color, I believe. I think. Yeah, I think I think that's what I'm doing. So I think there's I don't know if there's any more of this light color in the dragon. If there is, I'll work on that next. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go back and finish this outside border of the so that so that I can work on because this this light color is in the border, but I don't really want to count out here as much without more of a frame. So I want to finish this frame color, at least the inner frame, maybe the outer frame too, and get that done so I can more easily do this like the colors cross country. So. <clears throat> That's my plan for that one. So I may work more on that light color if there's more of that in the dragon. And then I'll work on border. So that'll be what I'll do today or tomorrow. I don't know yet. We'll see. Because I, I want to get both of them. I want to get one more um, rotation on Anne as well, which is this one. And over here, <clears throat> it's my crop of Quick Stitch Anna Green Gables. And I worked on this last week, not the week we just finished, but the one before that, and got over 600 half stitches, I think, which is a great chunk. So it would be fine probably if I don't do any more on it this month, but I did want to maybe get all of my full coverage Fanatics pieces looked at uh, get, give them two rotations in a month so this one has only had one rotation so far so this is where it's at right now this is on 40 count silk gauze one over one half stitches so i'll work on this a little bit more and then i'll post my progress in full coverage fanatics for that monthly challenge monthly theme Th these are non-counting themes so you can do as much or a little as little as you want but it is nice to see some significant change over since it's a focus piece. So what I had been doing before is just starting at the top of the color list and completing the colors as I go down the list. So I may just keep doing that until it's done. So hopefully those will, I'll have time to work on those today and tomorrow. And then in April, I figured mine as well, since there's no specific challenges, might as well get a, get a uh, move on on my family pieces. Because the first and the second are the days for my husband and son's piece. So I will also plan to work on Simpsons again, which is this one. And it was one I found on eBay and recharted myself in my software because the printout was horrible. <laughs> and I am doing this one over one half stitches on 40 count also, but this is even weave, not silk gauze. So this is where I'm at now. And I like I had, last time I talked about this, um, a couple weeks ago, I had a lot of comments. There was one, one and a half naysayers, but the majority of you recommended that I continue to try to keep this a secret for my husband, because the main reason being, if I know that he knows, it might put more undue pressure on me and take, make it less fun if I'm like, feeling like I'm obligated to work on it. Um... So I, I agree with that. I think it may end up being more of a chore if I know he's waiting for it. So I'll continue to try to keep it a secret. The hardest part right now is I edit in the same room that he's working. So it's up on the screen. <laughs> so that's why I didn't show it on the screen very often, very long this time because it's it's harder it's harder to edit it in the same room as him than it is to stitch it and find time to stitch it. So. We'll see how much how much I get done on that um, this week, and I also want to work on touchdown, which I believe I'm probably the closest to a finish on this one from all my family pieces. When I finish, I'm assuming this one. <clears throat> I want to add in my crazy wonderful owl family, and have that be. That's this one that I worked on last time. I want to work on this once a month to go with the date of our anniversary because it's like our family. So um, this one I think will be the next one that I'll finish of the family pieces. So when I drop off this family piece, I'll add in that one. 
And that part of me doesn't like having six projects every month that I have to work on, half in quotes, because I really don't have to work on any of these. But, but there is definitely some value in regularly working on them to, to get them finished since I have people or, you know, in mind for them. So that is a good thing. So here's this one right now. And last time I finished all the white, which is a major accomplishment. This is also on the same 28 count light blue even weave by MCG Textiles that I did the dragons on. And I think I will go back through and work on the light gray to fill in all the holes in the white areas before I move on to other colors. So we have all the white that needs its shading and then we have gray pants, black shoes, and various colors in their socks and shins and things. So, and then I'm done. All the backstitching. There, the top half of this is backstitched, but all of this down needs backstitching also. And it's, it's not, it's not too hard of backstitching. It's basically an outline, and a little bit of um. There's a little bit in here, you know, to emphasize wrinkles and shadow and shadows and stuff, but not too much. So. That's that one, and so. That'll be my plan for this week. I'll work on family pieces and Anne, and then hopefully get caught up on my tree. I need to start the April branch as well, so um, I'll work on that. And I have maybe finished the backstitching on the, the little owl for my son's teacher. So we'll see what I get to. Um, Life is still a little bit strange, but we are plugging along. This is our third week of distance education where we're working at home. So um, we'll be picking up some Chromebooks from the school tomorrow to enhance their learning after spring break. Next week is spring break, and so they won't have any assignments then, but then when we come back, they'll, they'll be ramping up the education and teaching and stuff with these... Um, so they want every student to have a dedicated device. And so we'll go pick those up tomorrow and and then we'll do even more stuff for the elementary, which will be nice because the junior high curriculum has already been active and up, update, kept up to date um, because they were already a lot more tech, technologically set up prior to all of this, this chaos. <laughs> so they were able to just easily launch into that and, and go right into regular learning online. But um, the elementary will be doing that after spring break, so... Right now we're still doing worksheets and various things. So it's nice. We still have a schedule. It still feels very normal. We're just always at home. <laughs> so with that, I hope that you are finding time to stitch in the midst of everything that you're staying safe and staying at home if you can. And um, just have a wonderful week and happy stitching. Bye.